Welcome to Selnar's Miniatures. Today, um, I'm going to be going over prep work prior to painting a miniature, but after putting the miniature together. Um, as you had seen in the beginning of the video, I had showed um, Vallejo map varnish, and that's what we're going to start with today. So after we've put our miniature together, um, this includes you know, clipping it off the sprue if it's on a sprue and cleaning up any mold lines or sprue um, chips left on the miniature. Um, we are going to start by um, filling in any visible gaps. Um, like here on this um, armor piece, we can see there's a gap between the two pieces of the skirt and we're trying to fill it in using matte varnish. Matte varnish is great for filling in small um, little gaps like this. Um, some people use Elmer's glue. Um, it's, and this is in lieu of using some sort of epoxy to do so. Um, the reason why I use matte varnish is because it's thin, um, but it is thick in consistency. And so what you can do is in these small gaps is you can fill it in by putting the matte varnish in and moving it into the gap, as you can see I'm doing here. Um, and you're just trying to fill in the gap. You're not trying to occlude any detail. When this dries, it will be thin, um, it'll be strong. It will not like reactivate when wet. Uh, Elmer's glue, you know, you have to kind of soak it to reactivate it again. So if you're gonna prime it or paint over it, it should be fine. Um, I recommend doing this stage before you prime um, mainly because, you know, um, then you can see if you still have a gap and fill it in some more if you need to. Um, so I'm just going to go around each of these miniatures and I'm going to find where the gap is. Um, like here on the skirt on this um, archer, we're just going to go and we're going to take our brush and just fill it in. Um, you don't have to be super thin or get it super thin. Um, matte varnish dries pretty close to the surface it rarely leaves any sort of like bumpy um, texture or raised area unless you have it really really thick um, in my experience um, I have used epoxies whether it is a two-part epoxy such as um, green stuff or some other like a clay epoxy mix um, to fill in the fill in gaps usually i reserve those things for larger gaps on things like a piece is missing from the miniature and you have to fill in a gap or it's really not well designed and it has a large gap i i reserve it for those things i also reserve it for like i want to make a cape when this miniature doesn't have a cape kind of situation um the reason being is because most of the two-part epoxies uh typically you know, they're thicker on, um, you have to smooth them out. Um, you know, you try to put it in the hole and you know, it has pushes out because even if you scrape it off, it does, you know, need to dry. Some of them expand, some of them don't. Um, and this is just like a fail safe just to use this sort of like simple solution and moving on to more complex solutions if you need to. And this is really the simplest of solutions is using either, you know, like a matte varnish. Uh, and notice I'm saying matte, not gloss. Um, gloss has some properties that if you try to paint over it, sometimes the paint will stick to it. But paint will stick to matte varnish. Um, and you can continue to, you know, prime or paint as you need to. Um, and not have to worry about any issues of that sort. Um and as you can see, I'm kind of trying to keep these miniatures um, in focus. This is, um, it's been a, a very long time since I've done any like video and, and um, I'm using my iPhone for this. So it's a little bit of a learning curve. Um, so please bear with me. This will get better as time goes on. I'm just learning the ropes and trying to make sure I have, as you can see, I keep trying to put it back into the center of the frame so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and also, uh, the thing you need to keep in mind is before you fill in any gaps, uh, make sure it's not designed to be a gap. So, um, as you can see with the obelisk here, there's this large crack that goes along the side of it. And that is part of the design of the miniature. That is not a uh, problem with 
Um, the piece is not fitting well together. It is a, a part of the design of the miniature, and you don't want to fill those in. So, again, you know, kind of pay attention to the miniature. Is it supposed to be there? Is it not? Uh, like, obviously, like these spots where, you know, the skirt is um, supposed to be one piece, but it's obviously a part. You're going to want to fill that in. Um, these armor pieces, it looks like it, it should be one continuous piece fill those in but like there's these cracks in the mass on these miniatures um these are jade obelisk miniatures from games workshop for the war Cry, Cry game um you don't want to fill those in unless of course you want it to be smooth which is entirely possible that's up to you but i would um if you're just starting to do this sort of thing um i would think about that before you fill it in um you know, otherwise, if you've been doing it for a while and you feel confident in filling in, go for it. But um, I typically, if it's designed that way, don't unless I have something in mind, I don't like to to fill those in and change the way it looks. Um, and as you can see, um, I'm going through and I'm just filling in some of these gaps again. Um, so once you get this stage done, you let this dry. Um, you're going to want to pry, you know, go through and do it again to make sure you fill them all in properly. Um, but once they're all dry, um, you can prime them. And as you can see here, I'm using a Vallejo brush on primer. Um, there are a variety of different types of primers out there. Uh, there is um, brush on primer. There is rattle can or spray paint primer. And then there's airbrush primer. Um, I, because of where I live, um, have decided that brush on primer is best. Um, I live in an area where it, it rains a good portion of the year. So rattle can is not really my friend. I don't have a spot inside to do rattle can. Um, the other issues with rattle can come in. Um, there are so many factors involved with it. Uh, like, is it, hum how humid is it? What's the temperature? Um, how far are you spraying the miniature from? They have a recommended range. If you're too far inside that range or too far outside that range, you can kind of change the way that it um, comes across on the miniature. Um, did you prime it and you thought it was dry and sprayed some more because you thought you needed some more, but come to find out it wasn't completely dry, so now you have this whole texture thing going on, which can also come about if there's too much humidity or if it's too close. Um, you can over prime with a rattle can. Um, you can lose detail, which really sucks. Um, and so uh, I have, over the years uh, of doing this, have decided that, you know, brush on primer is probably my best friend on this. Um, now, the third type um, is airbrushing your primer, which is uh, basically what this primer I'm using to brush on is originally designed for. It's designed to go through an airbrush and... Um, be used that way uh if you're new to the hobby a couple of things to keep in mind um if you're going to use an airbrush there are things you should have you should have a respirator to protect your lungs and your throat and your mouth um aerosolized um acrylic paints are terrible for you um or any paint to real in reality is bad for you to breathe in um you should have a respirator but you should also have a, a vent uh, a specialized vent for drawing um, those fumes out, and you should be spraying into that vent, um, whether it is a typical compressor um, type of airbrush or the brand new type that's out, um, which I have one of, which is a USB um, charged um, airbrush. They still aerosolize um, these uh, paints, and you should be taking precautions to protect yourself. Um, you can do it outside, but I would still recommend wearing a, a ventilator or a mask in order to keep you from breathing it in. Um, but if you have to do this inside, you should have a, um, a vent for them. I do not, so I do not use those. I only use my airbrush during the summer months currently. Um, I am looking into getting a, um, a vent, um, but I just have to figure out where I'm going to do that in my household um, because it needs to lead outside. Um, in best case scenario, or have several filters to filter it out. Um, but as you can see, and I'm having some difficulties here because, again, I haven't used a camera in a while. 
um, to film stuff. And I realized that it is focusing in on the miniatures below. So I am going to move those out of the way. And then I will continue to do um, some priming. Um, so the nice thing about brush on primer is um, it's really hard to over prime. Um, if you think you have an area that has too much paint, you can just move it around and spread it around. Um, you have an area you think that doesn't have enough paint, you can move primer to that area or reload your brush and re-hit that area. Um, I typically go until I think I have all of the um, miniature covered. And then I will set it off to the side and let them dry and I can hit them again afterwards. Um and any areas that are not primed, um, mainly because brush on, as long as you don't go thick, um, dries pretty thin. You won't notice a difference in the thickness if you have just a slightly more in one area than another. Um, most of the time, unless the detail is so fine that, uh, and shallow that it's going to be hidden, um, even by brush on primer. Uh, I really, um, as you can see, I'm kind of moving around, looking at things, uh, trying to figure out where to... Um, place the you know primer where I want it uh, what area needs to be hit and I'm just kind of going back and forth and looking around and as you can see and I'm trying to also get underneath like the cloth and the cloaks and the armor and hidden areas that you know are definitely gray um, in color um, again if I miss anything I can with the brush on go back and go over that again and move forward um, the idea behind this is i'm using black because um, when i go to paint these guys i'm going to do a gray scale um, basically i'm going to go from black to a dark gray to a light gray or a white to give um, basically a high contrast look um, that way I can use some paints to my advantage. It's similar to um, Xenophil Highlighting. If people have used Xenophil Highlighting over like black and then gray from 60% uh, 60 degree angle and two white at a 45 or 30 degree angle from above um, to give some, you know, natural shades and um, in areas that wouldn't necessarily be hit by light. Um, ultimately, the idea will be I'm going to try to use some... Um, Army Painter Speed Paints, um, you know, to kind of give me some quick color and areas um, just to get a lot of coverage and get some basic shades and highlights done without having to use um, like a shade from uh, like Agrex Earth Shade or some other company's shade um, to kind of, you know, darken the recesses. Um, and then obviously, you know, move on from, you know, the highlights and just add more highlights, which is a nice thing. You know, speed paints are basically just a tool in the box. They can make things go a little bit faster. Um, you know, I do something on what I call, um, mid grade tabletop, which is basically, uh, not just a shade and a highlight, but like a shade, um, high end about two to three highlights, sometimes four, um, to make it look nice on the table. Um, but not to make it so complex as to think it's um, a display level. So again, I'm going through and I'm just shading these up, getting them ready for the next time. Um, I will be doing more videos on these guys as I paint them. Um, and we'll be moving, uh, putting those out when those are done. Uh, right now, like I said, I'm just going through and doing all the basic work. Um, this just happens to be a GW project, um, but not all of my miniatures are going to be GW. Um, and I just want to go through and show people how to do things. And the next time um, I get a miniature ready to be painted, I will go through the cleanup process so you guys can see that, um, which is, you know, the clipping off the sprues, if they're on sprues, um, cleaning up the sprue points, um, Cleaning up any, um, you know, mold lines the best you can. Um, some material is a little harder than others. So showing you how to deal with different ones is one of the things that I'll be doing. Um, 
but at this point, you know, we're getting towards the end here. I'm finishing this last guy and, uh, I look forward to, uh, seeing you guys again and we'll be moving forward. And like I said, um, I'll have more videos and as I go along, I'm hoping that this, uh, focus and making sure things are in focus are, is a ideal. All right. Thanks very much. And we'll see you soon. Bye.